Good morning, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and just be honest. It's not actually morning. It's like 6 p.m., but my stupid self accidentally deleted my clip that I took this morning. So I just pop it on in here to explain what I was saying. <clears throat> All I basically did was saying was that today is the greatest day of the week because I was getting to deaccess and reaccess my port. I was getting to shower. I was getting to put on self tan, do my hair, everything that you don't get to do whenever you have your port accessed. And I was so looking forward to it. And now that it's done, I can say like it. Spoiler, great time. And then I was explaining that my home health nurse was coming to draw blood per usual, but I've had really bad GI issues all day because of Bactrim. When I say bad, I mean messy. I'm gonna leave it at that. Y'all can use your imagination. It's not been cute. And I get 12 more days of it. Love that for me. So excited, <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. Um, <coughs> I got a call saying that my IVs were set to end technically tomorrow, but I do like I need them more. So I emailed my doctors this morning at like 11 a.m. asking that for them to extend my IVs. No response. 4:30, I go onto the portal, open it up, and see they haven't even opened my message. So I sent them another one with a more urgent, like headline, title, subject line. And basically it was like, y'all listen, like I need another week at least. Please just go ahead and extend it for me. So hopefully tomorrow's Friday, hopefully they will get that early in the morning and they can get everything set up to where I can have my IVs this weekend and not have to miss any doses because I need it. I don't want it, but I need it. And just like that, I'm clean for the first time in a week. Let me just tell y'all, if you've never had a port or had pick lines where you're not able to really shower for a week or weeks at a time if you have picks without having like your arm out of the shower, it is the most glorious feeling ever whenever you're able to deaccess or get your pick removed and be able just to take a real long hot shower and just get all like the weak it's worth of a muck and dirt and just nastiness off of you. It's definitely just makes you feel better. Even though it doesn't <coughs> <coughs> even though it doesn't actually help your insides, like I don't know. I always feel better after I get my shower and get my hair done and everything. Like I'm more tired. Like right now, I'm exhausted. I'm putting up energy right now, but I'm exhausted. But it just makes you kind of feel better about yourself. I don't know. It just feels good to be clean whenever you haven't been clean in a while. But now it's just on time. I have to do my next IV. So I just have to get reaccessed all over again. Hey, accessing my port is being postponed right now because my blood sugar is dropping really fast. Um, my hands are shaking so there's no way that I could put a needle <clears throat> in my chest and be confident about it and I just hit a wall of absolute exhaustion <laughs> it's so it's annoying because I had such good energy all day and now it's like five o'clock <clears throat> and I'm just dead my lungs have been holding up all right today like I got out a few plugs but I haven't needed oxygen I haven't had really many coughing attacks or anything I've had really bad GI issues but my actual lungs have been holding up and my energy levels been holding up so I thought that I was doing a lot better but of course just sh taking a shower I think and I'm drying my hair and things like that just really took it out of me so now I'm going to <clears throat> just push back my IVs even further. 
and try to get my blood sugar up a little bit because it's not low. It's not low, but it's dropping fast because I was on, I was doing a tube feed um, while I was, before I, uh, when I got out of the shower and those are full of sugar. And when I took it off, I suddenly was getting no sugar. So on my freestyle app, where it charts my blood sugar, you can see that it's not going down like at an angle, but it's going straight down. So it's giving me symptoms of lows, even though I'm not technically low. So I just need to get this under control before I can attempt to put a needle in my chest. Right now. But before I do so, I'm gonna go ahead and warn that I don't wear a mask when I access my own port like I'm supposed to because the masks that they give you are so big where it <clears throat> I don't know how to describe it but it makes it where I can't focus on and see as good like when actually doing the accessing part so I just don't breathe on it and hold in any kind of cough that I have <clears throat> Good to get them out now. Hold off any cough that I have from the time that I stop san or like finish sanitizing until the dressing's on. So now what I'm essentially going to do is you're gonna notice I'm looking over you because I'm looking in the mirror so I can find the right spot. And essentially I'm going to find the center point in my port. You can see there's these three little dots that guide me. And my job is basically to just stick the needle directly into it and hope that we get it in the right spot on the first try because I really don't want to have to redo this. Okay, I have the plastic on it still. I'm just kind of practicing where I want to put it. <clears throat> I think I'm good. <laughs> and it is in. No, we flush. It's going in. Check for blood return. It's coming out. We are good to go. Woo! First try. <laughs> like that's all it is it's extremely easy and extremely simple it can seem scary whenever you first get a port because of the idea of you're legitimately just putting a needle directly into your chest but if it's done the right way you won't feel it if it's done the wrong way it hurts like hell and that's why I started learning how to do it myself and decided to start doing it on my own was because I had a few nurses who just kept missing and wouldn't listen. And one time it hurt so bad that I had a, I can't name, think of the name of the reaction, but basically where it hurt so bad, where my nervous system was like, nope, peace out, we're done, and I fainted. So after that, I said, you know what? I'm getting over my fear, I'm gonna do it. And I've been doing it ever since. That was probably three years ago best decision of my life. Bah. I made dinner 
today. I tried to make a pot roast, but it ended up being tougher than like a well done steak. <laughs> Don't oh. really know how that happened. It was pretty dang tough. It was pretty tough. So instead... I'll eat it for lunch tomorrow because we don't want to waste anything. But it's pretty tough. I don't mind wasting it. I, I didn't know. try it, but it just seemed not the best. But we just went to the most... Inefficient. Chick-fil-A we've ever been to. We've we, been to a lot of them. They had us wait in line. The drive through line was probably like... How many, how long would you say? I don't want to over exaggerate. I'm going to say a good 20 minutes. That's what I was thinking. Like 20 minutes in the drive through lane. Then. Not terribly long. They don't We've ask. Had longer in Carrollton, they, they don't, they didn't ask us what sauces we wanted, which everyone knows. You got to do. They ask at the very end, would you like any sauces? And you say, yes, I would like Polynesian. I would like Chick-fil-A. I would like ranch. I would like barbecue. They did not ask us. And they got my name wrong. They called me Candid. He called you Candid? Yeah, I heard him. What? It's like, okay. So then, once we got our food, we asked for Polynesian. We ordered collectively, I think, three entrees. And we both wanted Polynesian. Well, we didn't get any, to be fair, we, I didn't get any, like, uh, big fries or something like that. So. No, I'm saying with the amount of chicken we got, we should have gotten more sauce. Yeah. They gave us only two Polynesians for three meals. It doesn't. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up, and it really makes we me. We should have just asked for more, but at that point, like by the time I realized we only had two, we had already pulled away from the window. Yep. Um, didn't really want to go inside, so. Regardless, I'm really excited for my trip now. Same. It'll it be, better. It better be worth the wait. It'll be the first solid food that I've eaten all day. Positive. That's great news. But I wish it was the second or third positive. Th yeah, or, you um, can't win them all. You know, food that you've eaten, but at least you did three of your. Um, I did three cans of tube feeds. So yeah, it kind of cancels out. I wouldn't say it's it cancels fine. Out, but, well. It's fine. I mean, it gave me more calories and fat than eating a sandwich would. But you That's really true. Need to try to eat three meals a day. I had a boost for breakfast. I just, I couldn't be bothered. Okay. When you're aggressively not hungry and nauseous, you can't be bothered. With you. Always. That's the issue of these IVs. They're supposed to help you, you know, kill your infection, but they do really affect your appetite. I've noticed. Yeah, one hundred percent. So especially it's like, back, especially oral antibiotics so that's just what i find interesting it's just like unfortunately something which is nothing i mean it's just got to have the antibiotics but if if it's killing infection it's also killing her appetite so and she needs to eat she you know i need to pick up my marinol from the from the pharmacy yep. it's been there for three days but i haven't or maybe two days i don't know I just haven't gone to pick it up. I'll probably do that tomorrow while I'm out. I have such a freaking headache. I want to smash my head in with a hammer, but I won't because it'll make me ugly. And all I got going for me is my looks. I don't know how the audio is going to be right now. So if it's really echoey, please bear with me. I am in the garage right now because I came out here to hang out with Cameron while he was shooting pool. I was just on my phone or on my laptop. I brought it out here just, you know, doing Twitter, doing Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all just making my rounds. <clears throat> and I was scrolling through my personal Facebook page because I'm conceited and I came across my post from the day that I found out that James died. And every, all the feelings just kind of rushed back to me. And next thing I knew, I was sitting alone in a garage crying. I'm just waiting for it to get easier. <clears throat> but 
I guess it's just going to take time if it ever really will get easier. But being so close with so many CF friends, I, it's just a matter of time before it's another one and another one and another one because I feel like every year I'm losing a friend to this illness. How close I am to them is it varies, but I feel like every year since I was probably 17 or 18, I've lost a friend to this illness, which is why I cannot stress enough that I'm so freaking ready for the triple combo medication to be here <clears throat> so we can get a little bit of hope and a little bit of stability back in our lives and I can stop having to say goodbye to friends and worrying about burying them or them having to bury me. Like, it puts you in a really dark place <clears throat> thinking about this stuff and I mean, it's just, it's, I, it's not easy. It's really not easy. And no one knows what to tell you unless if they're going through the exact same thing. And even then, they don't know what to tell you because they don't know what to tell themselves. So, all this to say, I mean, my fever is going back up again. I've been absolutely exhausted since, basically since after I accessed my port and did my hair and everything. Like, got absolutely exhausted, no energy. I was falling asleep on the couch, just watching TV and eating dinner, which is unlike me. And now I'm just really, really, really upset and sad. Because this illness is just, it's brutal. It's freaking brutal and it's tough to watch. <clears throat> and that's why I kind of, people who don't get close to other CF patients, like, they're missing out on the bond, but they're not missing out on the heartbreak that comes along with it because it is inevitable. So part of me, like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't give my friendships that I have with my CF friends for the world. They're the closest people to me easily at this point, other than like my husband and my family, but Watching them suffer is worse than suffering myself. I don't know, guys. I'm just, I'm not going to get any darker tonight. I'm going to probably just go watch some Queer Eye and try and force myself to think about something else. But I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, guys.